Hey, Janice. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? No, I complain. <laughs> Suppose we're all healthy and have you gotten vaccinated or do you intend to? Um, I get my second shot tomorrow at noon. Mm. Where did where did you go? To UMass. Get... UMass, okay. I was able to get in and then it was really easy. The hard part was being one of the first people to dial the number to get into the system. <laughs> I know what you mean. I've been trying, but I just don't have the patience to be on, online. That you know, mm -hmm. sounds like a, what day of the week did you try? Um, I think it was like a Friday at 6 p.m. And I think it's now Friday at 4 p.m. That's the opening time every week okay. for UMass. So you have to call right exactly on the dot. And you and you actually called? No, it's not. Um, on. I'm sorry. It's Zoom. I, you know, everything is so much the same now to me. Yeah, you click on. I clicked onto the website and went on through. Okay. And you had to just have it just the right time. Right. Um, but I got through the first time, and um, I had some other friends that took two times. But it was it was every Friday at six p.m. That but I the last two weeks it's been four p.m. Yeah. So. And you have to be there and ready and then put in your information and uh, yeah. get to the other side first. <laughs> it's a race. So yeah, which, it is. One, which one did you get? Um, the Moderna, the four yeah. week one. Yeah. So that's the one that's potentially supposed to have some side effects. So I'll find out tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> I, I heard otherwise. I heard that the Good. Pfizer was more prone to um, oh, really? side effects. Yeah, the second time. Oh, my husband just got the Pfizer today, the second one. Mm -hmm. He said, so far, so good. So we'll see. Yeah, my mom got uh, the second Moderna. Yeah. Uh, what was it now? Three weeks ago. Uh-huh. She's 94, I think. Wow. Uh, but um, no no problem. Yeah. Oh. What, I, what I heard from someone, there was a woman at work who got a really bad reaction, and so did her, her partner, and they both got the Moderna from UMass. She ended up going to the doctors and she's still recovering after a week um, of really like chills and aches and flushing and cho I don't know, all sorts of things, headaches, everything, pain. Um, and what her doctor told her was that um, old people tend to do fine with that. You have a, um, a weakened immune system, so it doesn't fight the vaccination as much. And it tends to be somewhat younger. Like they were probably, I'm guessing early 50s something like that and they had mm -hmm. severe reactions which could have been from other reasons too but the doctor said that he saw more severe reactions with younger people than with older yeah so i said okay good not less to worry about <laughs> another good reason yeah, to really. be older <laughs> <laughs> really. no one experiment after all. yes <laughs> yeah hi, hi greg. everybody hi, hi greg hi greg is that hey hey Hi. Oh, oh hi, Good. Karen. Great. Good. Wonderful. <laughs> and it looks like Mary Lou is on too. And do we know if Azelle's going to, oh, I didn't see Azelle at the uh, anti-racism group, so I don't know oh. where she is. Huh. But uh, she should know there's a meeting, right? Yeah. yeah. I think you confirmed the time, didn't you, during the week? Yep. Uh -huh. okay. well, we can wait a couple, it's just now seven according to my computer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, me too. Mine too. A couple minutes then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the report looked great, Greg. That that was, you know. Yeah. Well, mine, mine was a minor part, although yep. my part always makes things look better. It and I does. Get of, I get a lot of uh, compliments, but boy, you know, Miriam and Co. Henry yeah. and Co. did all the work. That was yep. the cover without the stuff behind it would be uh, <laughs> not, not so impressive. Well, the inside figures and all were really good too. I like the way you expanded some of them and, and placed them. And it seemed like maybe there were a few more. Were there a few more figures than before? Okay. Yeah, I tried to add a few more pages. Good. Like the so deed, I, other things like that. Yeah, I, I think that that helps. Yeah, I think so. more engaging. Yep. Um, yeah, we'll talk about the report and yeah. what to do with it. Good. In the meeting. Good.
Henry, do you have the updated um, agenda? I believe so. Okay, great. Updated as of March 23rd, 6.24 p.m. Okay. Is that, that's the most recent, yeah? Yep. <laughs> yep, that's what I got too. <laughs> Karen how's, um, Karen, how's your husband? Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, I'm glad to Downstairs. Oh, good. He didn't want supper, so wow. I'm, I, I'm waiting for him to call up. Uh -huh. <laughs> He'll probably want supper a little later, mm -hmm. hopefully. <laughs> yeah. They got him out of bed, what, two hours after the operation? Wow. They get him up earlier and earlier now, apparently. Uh -huh. no, no rest for the weary. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm finding that out. <laughs> well, it's almost a week, so he should be on the men. Oh, good. Well, what? maybe we should get started. Well, Henry, I don't know. There she is. Oh, there she is. Great. Giselle. Giselle. Yo. <laughs> I had to do the unmute and the, the get the video going. Hi. Hello. All right, we're all assembled in. We can get started. Uh, let me just share with you the agenda. Has Giselle met Karen? Do you oh, guys know yes. each other? Karen. If I had the shot, yes. Oh, two of Karen, them. Karen who? Well, Karen huh? Zawanka, who's um, on the phone, who's uh, one of the commissioners. Oh, okay. I don't um, know. Azel, we, um, Karen, we have a new commissioner, Azel Florinina. Oh, greetings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just share the... Uh... Oh. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Yeah, here we go. Uh, what's with this? See, I'm, I'm trying to do something. Click on your, uh, your browser and move it, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't want to. Um, Christ. Yeah, your background is all weird. That's fine. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Can you see that? Yes. yes. No. No. <laughs> well, the, the phone, yeah, the phone people won't. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, the phone people. Let me, I'll read it. I'll read it. So first right. off, yeah, first off, uh, we've got approving minutes for uh -huh. February 5th and February 24th. Um, did everybody get a chance to read the minutes? I, I yeah. did not, unfortunately, but I'm sure they're fine. Yep, no, I, I read them. Me too. Uh, I think they're fine. Lovely. Henry, are, are you recording or not? Did you decide to record or not? I was just well, it, it is recording automatically. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. I just want to know. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I just, I just mentioned it. Yeah. Um, so uh, any uh, discussion about the February 5th minute? Um. Do that. Oh, oh, someone else here. Someone's in the waiting room. S U. Yes, she is um, a next door Shootsbury um, person who is interested in the in our work um, that we are doing with Native Heritage. Okay. Preservation Ready? in town. Yeah, I invited her. Okay, yeah, it is a public meeting. Welcome, Ocean. Not yet. What's okay. her name? Sue S U. Okay. I'm pronouncing it as short for Susan. I'm not sure. Um, Hoyle H O Y L E. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, trendy, okay. oh, sir. I guess we'll admit her. Uh huh. <laughs> Welcome, Sue. Henry, can we get off the uh, screen sharing? I just rather see people's faces. I feel like I can't see this. Oh, it's okay. all blurry. Let's have a, let's have a, let's That's have a much better. Here we are. 
There we go. Hello, Sue. How do you do? No, she, Sue's on uh, mute. Yeah, she's on, on mute. mute Sue. Yeah, not anymore. Okay, just unmuted. Hi. Hi, Sue. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, Hazel. Hi, Sue. Good Hi, to see you. you. How are you? Yeah. I think I've seen you around. Uh, <clears throat> should we go around? Uh, do you know everybody, Sue? Uh, well, um, you necessarily need to. No, actually, just I've written with Miriam, and Azel and I know each other from way back. Okay, Henry. I'm Henry. Hi, I'm Henry. Greg. Hi, Greg. Yeah. I'm you know Janet. Right? Black box. <laughs> Your name is very familiar. <laughs> and uh, Karen, Karen's just on the phone here. Hey, Karen. Hi. Karen, who's uh, an old, you know, she's been with the commission quite some time, certainly longer than I have. Uh, and okay, that's uh, so we're yeah. about to go over the uh, agenda. Just throw that up here once more. Um, Okay, we have minutes. Yes. Any discussion, objections to February 5th minutes? No. Um, do you want to take a minute to look at them? I mean, this is something we, we used to actually do um, in person, we used to circulate the hard copy and people would read, read the minutes. Um, would say you, those who uh, have oh. not had it. Yeah, Greg and Karen weren't there, so they won't be able to vote on that one. Got it. Thank you. I wasn't voting on the other one either. I thought you were. <clears throat> Don't uh, think so. I wasn't there. I have you present for the 24th. Oh. Yeah. But not I for the 5th. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Um, I guess uh, at least three of us have read them. Yeah, I've, I I've have. <laughs> I have. Yeah. And and uh, Mary Lou. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that makes four. That, I think that's that's a good number. Nice mm -hmm. even. Uh, shall we move then to approve February fifth minutes? Uh, I, I move to approve. Anybody second? I would second. Excellent. So. Uh, and we get is I, uh, Miriam Defunt. I. And Zell Florinina. I. Although she doesn't actually count because she was just a oh, guest, yeah. just so you for were the not, record. Yeah, you were not. Oh, a, well, I was. Record. I was so, a member at the 24th. Yeah. yeah. Right. No. At one of them, I was at. Or the one last week. Last yeah, just the one last week, not on either of these. Oh, okay. Not yet. <laughs> right. um, Greg Carlton. Yeah. He, he wasn't uh, present. He was not present either. During the 25th, yeah. Mary Lou Conca. Hi. I think I already mentioned. Did I miss anybody? Me. Oh, Jerry. Let's go on. Yes. <laughs> right. Moving right along. February 24th. Meeting. Um, I think it looks fine. Okay, so I don't, I'm not sure about raising my hand here, but my hand is up. Raise oh, I don't see it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> hand up, raise hand, there we go. <laughs> Just raise your voice there. Very Thank low. you, Henry. So I had a couple of issues, um, well, a couple of um, statements to make, and I emailed it to Janice um, as well. So where it says she spoke to the president of the Lake Wyola Association, the she is me, who is worried about an unsightly sign. I, I just thought that, this is what I said, um, that the president of Lake Wyola was concerned about signage, you know, coming up around the lake, N not so much worried. And then my usage, if I, you know, of the word unsightly, may not have been her wording so okay could it just be stated she was concerned about signage yeah you know or, it, 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 oh thank you and then yep. um the next thing where it says historic districts have to be voted on by the town which yeah. has not been done uh, and then uh, the following statement is these districts are just listed in m uh, matrix okay so is it true that 
they have to be voted on by the town. And I don't know where that information came from, but it didn't come from me. And then again, the, you see, I'm picky because I'm a writer. So the word just, when you put the word just in front of something, you're um, downplaying the next thing that you're gonna say. So, and just listed in May, Chris, I, I asked, could you eliminate the word just because it downplays the importance of that site. Mm -hmm. And the site is actually listed under Massachusetts cultural. No, wait a minute. It's listed under Massachusetts Historical Commission. And then it says William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth. Then it has Massachusetts Cultural Resource Information System, which is MACRIS. Yeah. So, so I ask if maybe that could be written out. And, oh, okay. Yeah, so. and the and the word just um, eliminated in front of it because yeah okay. because you know this all this all uh, I think a pretty big deal if we get it going this mm -hmm. historic. Henry, um, could we could we have the agenda off so we can see people? Yeah. So, sure. What are you talking about this first item, the CBL project? No. No, I'm talking about the minutes. Wait a second, um, Azel. Um, I, I'm talking about the minutes on 224. Oh, okay. Yeah. In reference to the historic district um, signs that um, okay. we are interested in, in you know, pursuing. Yeah, so I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I think it was Leslie that has told us several times that um, that you have to go through a town vote to create a historic district and that yeah, really? it has not been done in town. I think it was tried one time and then um, removed because people were opposed to it, the town center or something. No, no town, um, no a town historic district. Uh-huh. Okay, we got uh -huh. uh, Miriam. Miriam? Yeah, um, towns pass um, historic district bylaws. Um, and that's what they were, Leslie was referring to as a historic district bylaw. And Mass Historical encourages people to do it. There's a whole guide about um, historic district bylaws. I can send everybody a copy of it um, if you want to look at it. Um, so, I would appreciate one that. of the things that I've noticed. I mean, we're kind of going off the minutes. So I'm wondering if maybe we could just table the discussion about the okay. signs and historical districts. So right. just okay. focus on the minutes and then talk about this maybe later as time permits. Right. Okay. Yeah, I don't have okay? a problem with making those um, adjustments to the stuff. That's fine. Thank you, Janice. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, suggestions for the minutes? Going once, going twice. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I move to approve the minutes for February 24th, 2021. So that is, yes? With a job. Everybody second, sorry. I, I think I heard Greg. And so with adjustments, moving to oh, yes. adjustments. Yeah, with adjustments. Yes, with adjustments. I'll second it. All right. Uh, Henry Geddes, uh, yeah, yes. Ezell Florinina. She's still a guest, Henry. I, I yes, was a guest at that now. meeting. <laughs> I'm not really, now, so. You really need to become a regular. I, don't, I am she a regular. I am. I now. <laughs> now. Right. Signed and sworn in. She was at that meeting. The As trials and tribulations of becoming a member of the Shoot I'm Service already. Commission. Okay. Uh, 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 Mary Lou Conga. Aye. Janice Stone. Aye. Karen, and I'm going to butcher your last name here, but I'll try. Moronka? Shivanka. 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 That's beautiful. Yeah. What say you, Karen? It's a connotation of red woman. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> huh. So Karen, do you, do you vote to accept? I didn't uh, understand it did 
Uh, did this sign mean a town district that has been voted for now? No. No, 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 no. no. No, we're no, doing no. The on the minutes. The, the we're trying to approve the minutes for February twenty fourth. Yes. Then, okay. Right. Um, I don't think you right. called me, Henry. Hey, excuse me. Did you call me? No. Nope. Uh, Mir Miriam Defont. Aye. Uh, 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 me. Greg Colton. Aye, aye. And uh, did I call John? <laughs> John Stone. Yes, you did. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. All right, thank you with the changes. Um, thank you. Uh, next up on the agenda, and I will just, I think, read it. Uh, and then, where are we here? Uh, next up, update on CSL project, that is to say, ceremonial stone landscapes. Um, I guess I could say a word or two about that. Um, regarding our contact uh, with the, the uh, Wampanoag, uh, specifically with um, uh, the uh, Tippo, um, Bettina Washington. Um, I did send her a, a, a um, what I thought was a very um, a much more compelling contract uh, and then signed it. Um, uh, but I have not heard it's been a week and a half. So um, things move slower. Uh, there's also, you know, sometimes we hear about uh, Indian time. Uh, well, we'll just have to be patient about it. I don't know what else to do. Um, other than that, um, this is a success of completing our report. Uh, maybe Miriam could say a few words. Yeah, have we? I, um, oh, I'm sorry. I had a question for Henry. Should I wait? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Henry, the, the, you, you sent Bettina Washington, who is the chief. It, it, um, no, no. She's not, no, no. She's, she's a typo. Are you, um, is she a typo? Yes. Okay, so, so what about Mark Andrews? He works for her. He he's her assistant. Her. He's, yeah. okay. she, he's her deputy. He, uh, Mark Andrews is deputy to Bettina. Yeah. So are we working with both of them now? Are we contracting with Bettina and Mark mm, Andrews? No, no. Oh. Uh, this is a formality. It's just a matter of protocol. I see. We, we need to uh, discuss things with the head person, the director here. She has oh, to approve the contracts. I see. Okay. Contracts. You're saying plural again. No, I Is mean it... like, no, Mary, I mean Thanks. in general. The oh, in general. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. There's no hidden agenda here. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I, I'm not inferring there is. Okay. No, I didn't mean that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miriam. Um, yeah, so um, we approved the report um, and I did a little bit more updating and I need to stop editing it mm -hmm. because I could just keep working on it over and over and over and over again. So um, nobody's given me any more feedback, editing feedback. So I'm gonna assume there isn't any, is that right? Yep. Yep. So Everybody when Oh, sorry. We, we approved the report last week, but I, I guess I'm just um, want to double check that there is no feedback. Hmm. I have, so I have, yeah, I have not got, had a chance to look at it again. I've, yeah, I've read I it a couple of times, but um, it looked good. I, I, I could just uh, maybe go back and one last time and, and you know. They're looking for the time. Do it. Well, so I'll tell you what, let me send you a, the, the latest cleaned up copy because Okay. On uh, a couple typos, so um, I'll send you, that out. I'm warning you. I can't. I can't look at it at all until the weekend. Yeah. Totally well, bad. I mean, do we need to? Or I mean, I don't know. You've already. Okay? I think you've already. I mean, I'm, I don't think that you've already I'm, looked I'm, through it with a fine yeah. tooth comb, Henry. You give There's me not all much that feedback. Really left. There's no new material, right? There isn't any more new material. Okay. Well, I, I added some references. 
but I think that's just beefing things up. That's just adding more things in the end notes. It's not yeah. really adding content. Well, and I added a couple of sentences yeah. after um, watching the film at the film festival last week. Um, I was able to get access to the new documentary that Ted Timrick is releasing soon. Oh. Um, and I got to watch it yesterday. Wow. Um, so that was interesting just as a kind of a preview. He was letting some people watch it and give him feedback, like a focus group. So um, that was interesting. And I just, you know, I got some of the references out of that and kind of plugged in some research mm -hmm. that was mentioned in the film. So um, stay tuned for that. It'll be really cool. You'll enjoy it when it comes out. Yeah, the only, the only thing I would add in this case is maybe a reference or two, because I know an archaeologist who has worked in the region. And, uh, you know, I haven't talked to him yet, but I, I'm planning to in, in the next day or so. A reference oh. that you might want to add a reference or two? I, you know, if anything, I would add, I would, I would send you some references that, that okay. might be All right. useful. Well, then we have to, we have to have a hard stop we have to figure out when we're drawing the line to stop so that we can release it. Okay. Right, right. Because yeah. we can keep working on this forever. That's kind of like why I felt like it's good enough, enough is enough. Um, okay. We're not trying to do the most comprehensive review of all the research that's available. We can't do that. It's just an introduction. Yeah. Um, so we have a raised hand from, I believe it's Mary Lou. Yes, okay, so is the primer now being called a report? It's been called, is, an, intro, it's been called a pr an introduction. It's not a primer anymore. We took the word primer out. It's an introduction, okay. And, okay, good. All right, thank you. Um, so what I was wanted to ask the commission, we talked about printing some copies and I, what I wanted to talk to the commission and get the commission's guidance about is how should we release the digital copy um, and to whom? I mean, should we send it out to all the town boards? Should we, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming we'll put it up on our homepage, which um, I got a tutorial in how to edit the homepage. Um, okay. So oh. I, and I have full editing privileges, so I can add I can add pages to it now. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that'll be nice. But this so should be on the front page for now, right? On so the front page, we find yep. it newest stuff. So okay, um, that I guess my question would be sort of: Should we send it to the planning board and the select board, and I don't know, Concom? I don't know who else we'd send it to. The okay. library, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it should be the library, I think. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think and, that's um, good. Maybe Henry, you and I could uh, work talk about you. You know, sending. I'll give you the final draft and then the final copy, and then you can um, send. It'll come from you, I think, as the chair. All right. Yeah. Um, I think that makes sense. So you're just going to do it to the generic planning board. I assume there is one or to the clerk or to the individual members or well, how if you, you do, do it that? to the planning board, it gets sent to everybody and the okay. if you do it to select board. It goes to everybody. And okay. if you do it to the concom, it won't go to everybody, but can ask. Um, I can yeah. ask to Tessa. Can't okay. think of anybody else uh, offhand, but if I do, um, well, the friends, what about, I don't know if they really have an email address or whatever, but for the, the friends of historical I can commission. Send it, well, we can, we can uh, add it to Joan. Uh, yeah, and, Joan. Yeah, Joan and Leslie. And at least John, Joan and Leslie. Okay, and yeah. um, mm. and uh, J John, is, that is Who's that? Warwick. What's his first name? Is it John Warwick? Oh, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just curious how um, the, um, it says introduction to indigenous cultural sites in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. So I, um, I, 
wonder how the word indigenous was chosen over Native American. I mean, was that changed or it, was that the original title of this all? Well, I think they're interchangeable, you know, in, in terms of yeah. the usage. Um, okay. Uh, but there'd been some suggestion that some Native Americans don't like to be called Native Americans. Was it, was they not some, some don't. Yeah. That's yeah. true. And, it's controversial. It's, I, I, you know, I had a long conversation with Lise McLaughlin about this. And, uh -huh. you know, the recommendation from her was, you know, be consistent, like pick one thing and then have right. that be consistently how you approach it. Um, and I was going to include a little paragraph about why we were choosing indigenous. Um, so indigenous is used to describe traditional communities with long historical ties to living in a particular place. And it is a word that's used internationally to describe ethnic groups that have a long historical tie to a particular place. And so the thinking about indigenous is that um, it has a international component to it, which seems appropriate when we're talking about sovereign Long nations. Long time ago. Well, sovereign nations, tribes as sovereign nations, as opposed to being, um, you know, as, as an independent government body. So that was kind of the thinking about it. And it long time ago implies doesn't it yes yes and well, it, well, it, you can be current and a, a current day indigenous people but the idea is that you are tied to a particular place and you have a long history with that place yeah can i say something yeah, yeah. I, I would just say i don't think you have to define on that report why you use that word indigenous that's like it is kind of over over like trying to explain something in this culture and timing of of everything being so you know like sparked by not saying the right thing and and it is and i think anyone who who is aware enough of what's going on is knows that indigenous it's not gonna you know if you said oh just said indian well, then there might be an outcry about it. Right. But indigenous is a really wide use, acceptable kind of thing. And it's already such a really um, full and in-depth report that- Yeah, I didn't, want, I didn't want to put another yeah. definition in. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think it's, I, I would love to see your, your finished with the updates if you want to send it, but. Yeah, no, I'll send it out to everybody. Okay. Anyway, I, it's, it's really great piece of work. I mean that. It's, Thank you. Yeah. yeah I, I, you know, I, of course, have no, no issue with the, the usage. Um, I think they're interchangeable at the same time in the American context. Uh, I guess you could, you could say that. <laughs> Um, most Americans, and I use that term very, <laughs> you know, uh, most Americans probably might, might, I don't know, I ask you, uh, um, would they identify what we're talking about immediately? Of course, once you start reading the, the text, you realize what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, your average, you know, average Joe and Jane, um, May, may not immediately recognize what, what it is, you know. Mm. To, to Karen's um, point, I'm looking at it right now here on my um, computed dictionary, and it says indigenous relating to or being a people who are the original earliest known inhabitants of a region or are their descendants. So, so you know, That's Karen- nice definition. I'm sorry? That's a nice definition. Yes, yes. So Karen's saying, you know, that that they um, go back in time mm -hmm. is and on point here. <laughs> we could have a little asterisk there and, and a one-liner. How about that? Well, I could put the word indigenous in the, in the uh, definitions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Well, that's yeah, good, that's an interesting choice and almost like a, a storytelling. Well, it, it, 
the intro to the whole thing, we're, it, you know, it's like we acknowledge this, we honor this root. That's right. Of this land. It's like, you know, in all these meetings, they always ask, okay, you're hailing from what, what tribal lands? Yeah. Have you been in meetings that say that? And so you have to, oh, and I'm, you don't just say, oh, I'm from Western Massachusetts. Oh, I'm from the lands of, and name that tribe that that's what groups are doing right now. So okay, all right. So I will I will add that. That's fine, and um, add it to both. Add indigenous to both reports. Um, we had talked about wanting to get printed copies to give to maybe some key parties and. Um, that was what we talked about at the last meeting. And before doing that, I'm gonna ask Greg, if you can, once I get the, send you the final copy, if you could um, do your magic for printing, because to have it printed, it has to be in a different format. So you can do back-to-back -back printing, yep. right? I'll get it ready, yep. Okay, I know that it takes time and you work full time. So, sure. you know, I don't think there's a super rush for that, but maybe in the next couple of weeks, if we can do that, then I was gonna get, some quotes about printing costs from a couple of different printing places. Okay. And is, can, can I ask, is this, and this is because I'm coming in mid to late process, is this to be um, a part of a major town meeting coming up beyond, uh, or, you know, what's the timing of trying to get this in the hands of people? The timing is that we wanted to get it out before the focus gets on the solar project permitting right. because we don't want it being overshadowed. Right, and is that um, gonna happen? Yeah, eventually it will. So I think that we wanna get it out soon. That's why I was thinking we'll send out the digital copy maybe even this week. Mm. Um, but then we were talking about giving a printed copy maybe to the select board, maybe to the planning board, you know, maybe we'll print out 20 copies that we would give, maybe give a copy to the library, um, keep a copy in the historical commission files. Cool. That's good. I, I think it's pretty important for the um, library to have this and, to, and then for um, people to know it's at the library and that maybe it could be like one of those um, reference documents that people that that you can't take out of the library you know what I mean mm -hmm. like you you can look at it only when you're sitting in there or outside on the bench because this is pretty important stuff there's there's not you can't find a lot of stuff about Shutesbury anywhere unless you mm -hmm. go to the computer mm -hmm. so you know you you're having yeah this this would be a good thing thank you and, I'm glad to yeah, feel that way and, and if, if, if I could also say something about um, the library, I, I talked to Marianne about hidden landscapes and they, she used to own those copies. And I think she purchased them twice, but they were, so, uh, they were of such poor, um, what do you call it, digital reproduction that they she did them. <laughs> they fell, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. I'm the kind of person, and, and I don't know how I would take this up, and I know I'm going, well, this is CSL, uh, um, that can get a return for something that, you know, has been purchased that is not of the quality that it should have been. So I'm wondering if we want to look at that as, the histor as a historic commission and getting Maybe we know somebody who we can get copies of it in its yucky form and, and you know, made into a better DVD that will be accessible to the public. Because it's very important to get public awareness and attention and concern and interest around this whole, um, these stone prayers. I, I, I think that that's going to be our whole key well, the document will be on sorry is the document yeah. will be on the website and publicly available from there uh-huh uh-huh 
But I love to look at a good movie too. I'm so saying. the films. Um, I I've purchased all of those films. I own them. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I did that at la- like back in 2018 when we showed the film to the town. That was my copy. Um, oh. And I own the other. I own two of the other ones. I don't own the, obviously the new one that's just coming out. Um, uh. But. Um, we can always show them, we can get permission from the filmmaker because we're not charging and it's a nonprofit, we're a mm. government. So um, we can, last time we showed it, I got permission from the filmmaker um, to show it and we can do that again and we can do it by Zoom and invite as many people as we want. It's a long film. The first one is a really long film and really needs to be broken up into two. Um, I think it's just, if you want to have any discussion, it's really hard to have a discussion after a two hour movie. Mm. Um, but um, we can do that. Um, and, you know, I think maybe that's something we might want to talk about scheduling. The other thing we, as we're talking about an update on our project is that we had discussed with Lise about her doing a public training. Um, and my thought about that if she were to do a Zoom training, is that I'd really like the planning board and the select board to come to it. I'd really like the select board to come to it. And I'd like to get some buy-in from them that they would commit to this. Mm. Because I, I just feel like they really, as the, they really need to wrap their brains around this. Right. Do you, here's what I wonder. So the report is kind of one way to communicate this, and it's a, it's a great way. And the films are another way to communicate. They communicate on another level with, all the, right. with all the experts coming in and out and, and the, you know, the mapping. And I, I only saw the last two. I didn't see the first two. So I, I wonder, you know, would, would the getting that buy-in from those those groups would it be worthwhile and is there time i guess that's the other thing is there time to host um a viewing you know like a film series about this kind of simultaneous with having you know the e the online report available a printed copy available um, at the library or wherever town hall and this film series uh, of that's going to be going over a short period of time. Like it, it maybe seem, seems like a lot, but there are going to be people who are going to say, oh yeah, oh, I didn't see that one. Oh, I want to see that one. And it might communicate to some people better than reading 90 pages of print. Yeah. I mean, I think that that would be a great idea to do the film series. I wouldn't want it overlapping with our tr- rolling out the, um, the document and having lease do a training because the idea was that the training lease would do is sort of kind of partner with this document. Okay. Um, Got it. But that's where I'm kind of like, you know, and maybe that's, maybe, we, you know, we should put it on the select board agenda and go to those meetings and say, would you be willing to do this? If we schedule this training, would you be willing to come to it? Because we really want a lot more town committees and town volunteers to be a part of this, as well as the public. We can schedule it at your convenience, but you know, I think we need to do that. We need to do some legwork with the select board and the planning board, and the con- I, can, I can bring it up at the concom. Right. I need to excuse myself for a couple seconds. Um, does that sound right to people? While we're while Henry's off yeah, doing yeah, this, I like, yeah. I like that idea of making yeah, like it part of a meeting. You know that that's brought up in a meeting because it's kind of a public invitation, then, as opposed to a kind of private okay. group email or something. Okay. Well, then I'll email them and then try to get on their agenda and show up their meeting and say, "Please come." Then we'll try to work out a date. Okay. Um, good. And then I'll work on a day with Lise. Um, the yeah. other thing May that, I, what? Before, before we change the subject, I, I wanted to uh, mention that um, uh, 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 an idea uh, of not 
immediately, but uh, finding creative ways to um, a different format for this kind of information. Um, and um, I've got some people at UMass who have a lot of experience, you know, doing things like, for instance, for example, developing a comic. Yes, using mm. that genre comic, very straightforward, very accessible, or animation, mm. uh, which you know can do a lot of things. Uh, but uh, th this would be, uh, you know, if there's interest, uh, it could be a project for somebody at UMass that that you know could 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 result in something very interesting and very useful for for us. You know, it could be at the library, it could be the school. Cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. Are uh, Henry? Are are these um, people at UMass of Native heritage? Like, because when you say comic, I just the, I remember that those. Um, mm -hmm. I remember there there was some big to do about um, some writers in France who made cartoons about Muslim and then they the next thing you know they all got shot oh please let's not bring that up oh no, I'm sorry no, but when you said no. comic that's the first thing I'll run through my head so no, no, you were talking, well maybe you said graphic novel that kind of <laughs> yeah well, I, I did say comic that was yeah. I know I know and see I'm visual so that's what no. I saw let me okay to be more explicit this is actually somebody who is cited constantly by our friend uh, 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 Nonam Kachat. Uh-huh. Uh, uh -huh. Sonia Atale has basically part of her career is based on producing these comics about okay. native people. She's a, a Ojibwe and um, her students uh, and, and she have been doing all kinds of very interesting, innovative ways to communicate uh, with a wider audience hmm. you know a few people are going to take the time to read this kind of document it's just too yeah it, it's, it's, huh. it's a lot of information well that sounds great i mean um yeah. so i would say let's explore that yeah and i don't, I don't know greg are, are you into comics uh, no <laughs> not as such but i'd be happy to to be you know part of that yeah it could be mm. a, could be interesting hmm yeah. In, in fact, Sonia, Sonia Atale has done comics on repatriation, you know, repatriation issues and that kind mm. of stuff. So right, right along the same wavelength of what uh -huh. we're going to Maybe we could get some of them and uh, review what she's done. Yeah, sure. that's true. I'll bring them next meeting for you, or, or actually okay. maybe even distribute them online. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that came up, I don't know who, if all of you went to that film uh, last week, and but um, there was a discussion about Peter Vickery. Yes. Um, who's an attorney in um, oh, yeah. Amherst who is now starting to work with Doug Harris. Oh, really? Huh. Uh, and um, yeah. one of the things that um, Peter is interested in is helping towns develop different kinds of preservation bylaws around ceremonial stone landscapes. And um, I had a conversation with Doug last weekend about this. And he had a conversation with Peter Vickery and um, Peter is interested in shoot what's going on in Shootsbury. And um, if we are interested um, he might be um, interested in helping us draft a uh, preservation bylaw. That would be great. So be marvelous. Um, if that is something that people are interested in, I will pursue talking to Peter and find out what he's about and what he's doing and wants to do. And then I can report back to you. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that's great. I, I just have a question. Um, it was sort of something lingering in the back of my mind. You know, we, we, uh, we've developed these guidelines, yes, which are, amount to a kind of policy, uh, but, but um, we've never really sort of run it by any legal mm. advice. And I'm wondering if 
Peter might want to just take a gander at what we've done. And, and yeah, I'm sure. Paper. I'm sure he'll have some thoughts about it. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I would say I think would be great to have a bylaw for preservation of these, but I I would still like to be able to include other stone walls and foundations. If you saw the stuff about the stone thieves um, active again around the area, and um, I think people do get upset about that kind of thing, and it would be good to be able to include that I agree. as part of the preservation as well. I, agree. I absolutely right. agree. Um, one of the things that um, some towns have is a demolition delay bylaw mm -hmm. um, which basically kind of says if you have something that's of historic va value um, before you demolish it for whatever you're going to demolish it you need to kind of have the historical commission come out and take a look at it um, I think that was like it had to be homes that were identified oh, oh. Historical or something. Well, that's mm -hmm. how it's written. Okay. I mean, you know, you can write it in different ways. It could be stone oh, okay. walls. I mean, you know, every town you can write a demolition delay bylaw. Oh, okay. In different ways. I mean, a lot of towns say, you know, if it's a property over 50 years old, if it's a house that's over 50 years uh -huh. old or over 75 years old, um, but it could also be stone walls if you wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. That I can get some can do some research about it and maybe come up with some examples. I've started collecting some examples from different towns. So I thought at some point I could share that with the commission and we could talk about whether that's something we want to pursue. But again, a bylaw requires that we have a public hearing and then we have to get it on town meeting warrant and the town has to vote on it. I think that I would think that perhaps being a much broader thing like the demolition delay, if it meant houses, that we could get a lot of pushback. There'd be a lot of opposition if it's too broad. Um, I could see maybe having that be a part of a preservation bylaw as an option if you know people really feel like they need to do something in this area, that there's some kind of a, a process for that review and maybe uh, mitigation and reconstruction or something like that, um, just incorporated within the preservation but things. Janice, when people yeah. do like, when, you know, I know you, you've looked into this more than I have, do a scenic byways. Yeah. Um, does then, isn't that in a sense, have a demolition prevention component to it? Some of them are really brief and they don't have a lot of information in it, including that sort of stuff. So I'll have to look at the- so What is the point of it is if it's not regulating it? It's supposed to just say you can't destroy these, but obviously there are sometimes instances where you know it's a taking if you don't let someone access their land or something right. like that. So I think that's maybe the problem um, with the ones that I saw is most of them were very brief, mm -hmm. and um, I think a real bylaw would uh, that's beyond the scenic scenic by, byway would be better. Mm -hmm more specific to stone. And that might be um, where maybe we could get some guidance from Peter in yes, drafting. definitely. Um, something that, I mean, you can have historic, you know, I don't, I don't know that a demolition delay is um, a taking. I don't believe it is because you're just delaying it. You're not no. seeing an absolute out. So a demolition delay might actually be easier than outright, you can't destroy it. Right. Yeah, that's what I meant in terms of having that as an option for um, a way to mm -hmm. be able to let people do something if there really is no other way. Or something right. Like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, it, you know, usually what people have for these things then is you develop a, a policy and then you have a form that people have to fill out and then, you know, you get a site visit from the historical commission or they come to a historical commission and review what they want to do and then we would sign off on it. The only thing with a policy is that you can't actually enforce it. For people like that have wetland restriction, wetland policies that you can't do this or you can't do that, people take you to court, you're gonna lose because a policy is not law. But That's if there's a, a, no, I'm saying if there's a bylaw. Okay, a bylaw, yes. It, and then yeah. you develop a policy for how you're implementing it. Okay, yep. No, I'm saying if you have a bylaw, then it is enforced. Okay, yep, right? yep. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. Yes, uh, me too. Walls. I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about my own stone wall. 
I noticed the other day that a, a tree that's uh, in, in, on, on my side of the sto of the stone wall um, has a sign that says um, uh, Cole's property. Ah. Oh. <laughs> now, you know, does, doesn't the stone wall define my boundary? <laughs> you know, necessarily. Trees in my on no. my side of uh, my side of the wall. On your side of the wall. Oh. Yeah. Who do tear that. Uh, no, cold, uh, but, well, you can tear that that off <laughs> if it's on your property. <laughs> the, stone, the, stone wall, the stone wall does not necessarily define your property. It's mm -hmm. no, not necessarily. No. Uh -huh. right. It might do. Okay. Yeah, we have a stone wall that defines one of our property boundaries. So anyway, we have, um, uh, so we need to, just to move on, can we um, move on to the next item, Henry? Sure. Yeah, let's see so we, we need to schedule or at least announce that we're going to have an annual meeting because every year we have to do one in the spring. And so um, I would just going to ask, ask that we call our next meeting in April, the annual meeting, and then we have to reelect officers. Um, last year when we did I guess that was the friends had to do an annual meeting or something, or that was the year before it was 2019. And they, we did it as part of a tea. Maybe some of you, I don't know. If that was, I remember there. that. Yeah. I think that was the annual meeting um, well, that, was that they we, had for we, friends. But wasn't that because we wanted to honor the outgoing yes. commissioners? That too. But there was something. Well, anyway, there, it, so there's a separate, I guess. Anyway, it's from they're separate, but we yeah. do have to call okay. them in the annual meeting, and so we can invite, we can invite them. Yeah. Okay. Is that All something right. we have to do? I didn't know. If we, we well, we to have do. to for that grant that we get every year. We have to have been able to say that we had an annual meeting. That's one of the requirements. Oh really? That, oh, I yeah. didn't. Know that. Okay. Well, which so, grant would that be? That's that money from that memorial fund for the, the Schmidt Trust. Yeah. Smith. Smith? Karen, that's the one you're yes. marching? Yeah. Yeah, yes. And I didn't do it last year because they canceled the thing. Right. Oh, oh, because of COVID. Yep. Oh. We'll have to see if it happens this year or not. Mm. So um, okay, so we'll call that our, our annual meeting next time. And then the next thing was that um, and this was my item. Hey. Um, the Southbrook Conservation Area. Does everybody know what the Southbrook Conservation Area is? No. So the Southbrook Conservation Area is about 90 acres of town-owned land. It's owned by the town. It's down near Lake Wyola and off of Randall Road, where the um, Old Town Beach is and the um, boat, boat access area. And there's a little gazebo there and a parking lot. And mm -hmm. then there's some trails that go off into the, the conservation area. And the Conservation Commission is responsible for the management of that property. And they are, um, they've applied for and are hopefully going to get some CPA funding to do some mapping and um, trail improvement and developing a, a trail map for the hiking trails there. Um, my thought had been um, there's another group that's also interested in getting a CPA grant approved next year to put in mountain biking trails. My thought about it was that there are stone structures in that 90 acre tract and um, it'd be nice to have them mapped before the mountain bikers go out and put out their trails. Mm, definitely. Um, so wow. that so I raised this with the Conservation Commission and said, could we do this? Do you have any problem with going out there and doing it? And then we would probably put up flags and map it. And then um, we would say, you know, what we want to have preserved and not messed around with by the um, trail making. Uh, we, we have a hand here from Sue. Hi. And, and Miriam, this is probably already part of your figuring, but uh, an extra reason to proceed with that is that mountain bikers create trail markers that very closely mirror stone structures. So even modern day indigenous people, stone structures, if they're putting them up for active worship, that could easily be, you know, confused when things are being mapped with um, trail, 
trail bikes own stone mapping system. Okay, I didn't know that. And we might want to sure. not, we might not want them to do that if it means that they're repurposing other stone yeah. structures. So yeah. actually, I, that's, I didn't know that, but it, yeah. that, you so, Google, just do a quick Google for trail markers okay. and mountain bikers, and you'll okay. see the stone structures. So um, I was thinking of this as being a, a summer project um, that we could get some volunteers to do, maybe us, maybe some more people in town. My next door neighbor is um, like super gung ho about CSLs. He's a younger guy, and he absolutely wants to do this. <laughs> and that's the guy. Thought that's great. He'll, he's <laughs> he's got some energy. Um, but anyway, what I thought is that we could work with either, you know, maybe Anne Marie Kittredge would maybe help, maybe you, Janice, maybe we could get Eva to come out and assist or Lise. Um, maybe Eva would do it um, and kind of give us some training on what to do. And we'd break up into tracks and go out there and, and do some bushwhacking and map them. Um, so I, I kind of, I'm excited about doing that personally because I feel like, um, you know, we're setting an example of what we would like to see happen in the town and we're using land that we have control over, which is, seems like a non-controversial good place to start. And then perhaps, um, you know, we could share this data with the tribe that we're consulting with and see what their thoughts are about the best way to preserve it. I'm for it. Yeah, we have a hand from uh, Mary Lou. Yes, hi. Um, Miriam, you said that um, you know that there are CSLs in that um, Southburg conservation area. They're stone structures. I don't know if they're, I don't know. I know that they're stones. I, there may be some historical stuff. Janice probably knows it better than I do. There's, okay. col there's colonial stuff and there are other things that appear to be um, stone groupings or whatever you want to call them part of a csl there are quite a number of them based oh, on wow. the people i've gone out with and we've looked at them but i i think we need to be cautious i think it takes some training of the eye mm. to be able to I identify these and not get carried away mm. um so training should probably remain with a group helping to GPS, but still have someone who is good at it um, be in, okay. in charge, sort of an on in the field training that people get better and better as they help. And there's certainly plenty they can do to help GPS the structures and you can explain to them. They're not all the same. They're very different types of things. That's right. Um, so I think it would be difficult just to send people out with like a couple hours. No, I, well, no, I, I wasn't. Yeah, I guess that wasn't what I, I was know. envisioning. Yeah. My, what I was envisioning was getting maybe a couple of people who are willing, who are knowledgeable, uh -huh. yeah. take yeah. the leadership role, and tr you know, and kind of yeah, go out with us and direct us, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, or, so or, when when I'm sorry, when you're saying GPSing, I I don't I don't even know what that means. Like putting it in a computer GPS like you know the thing you put when you drive is that what you're saying to locate it so yeah basically yes you you establish points so that they then appear on a map depending on what kind of map base you create um usually you don't you just do like a, a center point or something or maybe there's a cluster of them and usually you just do like one in the middle but in this case you may want to sort of mark the boundaries or something um Okay. Depending on what, yeah, what, how many, what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 if these are there and they're identified, then I wonder if that would be part of the Lake Wyola Historic District. Hmm. Because Southbrook is around Lake Wyola, right? Yeah, just south of it. And well, that's also considered a historic district in the um you know, the Massachusetts cultural. Yeah, the colonial yes. stuff might be. Yeah, okay. But just so you know, the, when Mass Historical goes in and calls something a district, um, my understanding is that they're not necessarily looking at, um, you know, the acreage. 
they're looking at the properties that they've inventoried, which are all mostly roadside residential. Oh, oh because the six districts that are listed, listed there are all listed by acreage. Yeah, I don't know how they came up with that. I don't either. <laughs> Somebody did it. But or I they put it. Yeah, they put it on a map some way. This but anyway, I just mm -hmm. found that interesting that maybe those stones are within the Lake Wyola Historic District. This could be an interesting way for us to expand their definition. Mm. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. yes, it's a Lake Wyola Historic District. And for Shutesbury, that includes pre-colonial structures as well as colonial. There you go. <laughs> you know, it'd be sort of interesting so to take their their there's territory and add more to it. That's <laughs> so right. One of the things that we might want to look at, and I, I don't think this is kind of like where Peter Vickery is right now, but Doug is there. This is what Doug talked about. The training is that he, at the, at the film was that he wants to get people together to start putting together a multi-site national register nomination. Mm in order to get the ceremonial district on the national register. So um, in order to do that, you need to have researched, you know, CSLs that are, you know, documented by um, the tribes and probably have some access to the site and, um, you know, some motivation from the landowner. So, um, Private land is tricky unless somebody owns land and they want to be a part of that. But that's where I was thinking, depending on what the outcome of this mapping project would be, um, you know, we might want to use town owned land as part of a nomination process. Mm -hmm. If there's a larger group in other communities <coughs> trying to put together a multi site nomination, um, and we've mapped um, data from Shootsbury on public property, I think that could be possibly helpful yeah 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 it's got a hand there sue this is, um i'm working i live in shoot spray but i also have land in wendell that does have a structure on it so i've started working with the historical commission there on a pilot project as a landholder to how do i get the structure identified and documented by native experts and using myself as like the pilot program, what eventually talking with other landowners and telling them this is the process to use if you suspect you have a site on your property. So this idea of the mapping, um, broad, broader scale mapping, very interested in that. I'm sure Wendell would be too. Well, um, you know, Again, you know, the mapping is part of the process of um, a multi-site nomination. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for those of you who don't know what happened, when 2008, when the Department of the Interior Keeper of the National Register made the ruling that the sacred <coughs> ceremonial hill in Turner's Falls uh, was a ceremonial complex, uh, they found that it was eligible for nomination on the National Register, but the nomination was never submitted. Um, it just the, you know, I, I think that that process fell apart. I'm not entirely sure how what happened. I think it may have been that, you know, once they got that determination, the various tribes and the coalition that they built around that kind of dissipated a little bit and nobody could agree on, um, how they wanted to go about the nomination process. Mm -hmm. And it's that site is protected. Mm -hmm. So that's also another motivation gone because that site's already protected. They don't need it on the register to protect it. But um, the door is open for a multi-site nomination. Sure. And if that were to happen, then the ceremonial district would be a real thing on the national register, which is kind of the, what we would love to see. Um, because, um, you know, having a ceremonial district on the national register would put the Northeast on the map in terms of indigenous 
history and culture. Mm. Well, Secretary, the new Secretary of the Interior, isn't it? Uh, yeah. A native woman. So. Yeah. <laughs> this could be the right time. Yeah. Um, I want, this is this is related, though it may not start out as such. Um, one of those films, I think maybe it was the third of that series, The Hidden Landscapes, the first Lake Champlain. Yeah, the, Lake the Champlain. first question afterwards was someone from Shutesbury asking how people in Shutesbury could get the information they need to protect these areas. Now, I didn't know if it was any of you or not. You know, I, you don't know who it was. But the answer was that um, Doug Harris and I, I, I wrote it down in my notes. I don't know if they said Nipmunk or Wampanoag or something, but they said Doug Harris is working with some like tribal Oh, people. right. Yeah. So I, I know about this. Yeah. So Doug, Doug currently is no longer a TIPO or a deputy TIPO. Right. Yeah. Um, but he wants to get back in the game, so to speak. So uh -huh. he is, has made a proposal to use it, which is the United South oh, yeah. and Eastern tribes. They are a federation of all of the tribes along the Atlantic seaboard. There's like 33 tribes, but all federally recognized tribes. And um, they do some things in coordination with each other. Sometimes they issue resolutions. Um, they coordinate things through USAID. It's kind of an intertribal government, if you will. And um, Doug is made a proposal that has not been finalized to kind of become a sort of ceremonial stone landscape ah. um, kind of work under them basically to coordinate preservation efforts around CSLs and so the idea would be sort of that he would work with the TIPOs from all the federal tribes to try to coordinate efforts and and maybe bring about um, a united effort to get this multi-site nomination process. And they mentioned specifically that they were working on something for Shutesbury. Really? Yes. I was like thrilled, absolutely thrilled. Um, that they, I think he's talking about. I think he's talking about us. Yeah. Right. Oh, you mean like us, 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 us? Oh, <laughs> I think that's it. Oh, I think he's. I didn't feel I think, like. I think we're the thing that. Oh. He's talking about. I mean, I, I was hoping it meant that Bettina was was you know moving forward with this, but you know it's just a slow process. But that that was maybe the the part that they were referring to. But no, I think he yeah. was aware that we're trying of our efforts. I think oh, Lisa, okay. Lisa McLaughlin has been keeping him um, updated on what we're doing. Oh, okay, great. Okay. And it's possible this may explain the the the, the delay with the with Bettina. You know, it, it, it oh. wrapped up in this whole transition. That they, who knows? It, I don't think so. I don't think that's no. it. Uh, I don't think so. So anyway, the good thing would be if Doug does get this official role, um, then he might be able to give us a letter of support on mm -hmm. use it letterhead, and you know, kind of work with us um, on behalf of USIT. So that would be a cool thing. Um, see if he does it, if it works, if that happens. Okay, so yeah. I, I have a question about Doug. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, if we would know that, but it, was he one who was trespassed by Coles? I don't know. I, don't I have know. no idea. Okay. Anyway, that's so that's good. Yes, I think that'd be great, Miriam. I hope that Mr. Vickery might be willing to help work on this and we can become part of the bigger yeah. picture and yeah. um, do our own little sort of sample stuff. project at South Brook to get started yeah. and all that sort of stuff. It's, yeah. it's, it's you know, if, if we were able to do this, then we would also be able to kind of like make this kind of a real thing to the town. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it could even be a thing that, you know, maybe the schools might be interested in, you know, if they take kids out to go look at, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, there could be a lot of different ways to get the community interested. But. A, a field trip. A field trip. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, Vickery, did he, uh, did he run for office in Amherst? I think it's so. possible. The same person. Yeah. I had him in a class. 
<laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> really? All right, another connection, Henry. <laughs> yeah, he was my daughter's. He was my daughter's history teacher in high school. Oh. He, he took a class that I happened to be involved in. He was in the class. So oh. I remember oh. him. I called up my daughter and said, do you remember anything about him? And she's like, she couldn't remember anything about him. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Terrible. It's in one ear out the other, apparently. Uh -huh. <laughs> so okay, good. What else have we got? Yeah. Uh, um, sign project updates. Um, I have nothing. And I don't know if Mary Lou has anything to comment, but I was kind of putting off anything to do with the sign project until after we had done your reports. So mm -hmm. we had enough to focus on. So we'll get back onto that now. Mm. So I, um, um, Greg, you and I were discussing about reaching out to the library. Um, mm -hmm. And so I did speak with Marianne and, um, and then, and it, you know, sort of introduced the, the idea to her and possibly her, um, I just ran it by it, what she thought of getting the elementary school involved. And then on that part, the, the schools are overwhelmed right now with COVID because I guess by April 1st or 5th, the state is pushing to put them back in the classroom. Okay, so, um, and we talked a little more and she, it, she said that, um, Henry, you have access as the chairperson to the, the big townwide email. And that maybe if, if Greg and I could put like some kind of survey and ask, you know, what, well, introduce the idea and what um, would be, you know, what they would want or expect of it or like that kind of thing, develop like some kind of survey. I think that's a good step. That, yeah. that would kind no, of... I, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I, I have access to... Oh, you have access to like the town-wide... You know when we get a, 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 a an email that says it came from this, this entity, this town entity, or that town entity? Like, I just got one from town administrator about the historical commission meeting. Oh, you have to go on their big website and say you want to get those. So all the people who went on the main website and say they want to get town notifications, uh, get them. So you as the chairperson, yeah, that's what Mary Ann told me. You can be one of those who puts out the um, notices to people who said they want to be notified by oh, the hit by the yeah stuff. okay yeah. yeah so then if 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 greg and i got a survey that might be like just a little tiny step to see does anybody even care to do historic commission uh districts here and and you know what else too they're afraid they think oh i can't change the <laughs> shingles on my house because i'm in a historic district and that's mm -hmm. not true either. That 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 that's a. I don't know why people think that, but that wouldn't be that wouldn't be anything that Shootsbury would um, demand of anybody living within a historic district. That is not you know the purpose of of our project. Yeah, I mean, if we do a survey, uh, say mm. you, know, you could work on it, but I'm wondering if it might need some kind of um, you know, inf informational material just to give a context. Right. Henry, can I I've, sure, Miriam. I've jump in here? Sure. Just while we were talking, um, I had sent an email out to Eva Gibovic because she's on the Historical Commission in Leverett, and I was a little curious about what their process had been. Mm -hmm. Their historical district is on, on the National Register. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there, you know, we, we had talked before and I just, this is just a little piece of information for everybody that we had talked about well what did Leverett do so Leverett went through the nomination process and took all of the uh, inventoried information and submitted a um, nomination to uh, the National Register of Historic Places and then they put up the signs so the signs are not I think we had thought they just put the signs up 
just because they wanted to put the signs up and that they didn't do anything more than that. Oh, I figured they, they did. They yeah. did. So that's actually a, a, an actual historic district in on the National Register. So um, I think that that's, that's a lot of work. We could do it. It's a lot of work to do it. Um, the data is there. Was there the a vote? data? I'm sorry. The data yes. is there. Mary? The data, the survey data is there. The Mass Historical has done the inventory and the nomination. Exactly. They have all the different sites identified and whether they're eligible for um, in our the National Register or not. The question is, you know, putting all that together, updating it. Um, updating it. What what is updating it involve? Because I'm. In, because this is what I'm thinking. I would go to M uh, Makris. I would download a copy of everything that they have about the six districts and then put that together. I'd get the application from the National Historic uh, Registry there, the one that you're talking about, and, and fill that out you know, with, with, with the historic commission, or is it just me and Greg has to do this? I don't know. But, and then mail it to them. Well, um, what you might want to do to get a feel for it is to go look on the National Register and look at Leverett's district and you can download oh, the document and you can see what their application looked like. They're, um, they did, they're all of these inventory sheets from Mass Historical that you're familiar with because there's in the Macris, the Macris, Macris right. uh, database. Um, and you have to assemble them. You probably have to get I have to look at the forms, that, but you might need more updated information, like who owns those properties now, or you know, is the house burned down or not? I mean, you know, some of those properties, that inventory was done 20 years ago. Um, yeah. So that's why I'm seeing you may need to double check on each of the properties and make sure we have the correct information. The the house numbers may have changed. Um, yeah. Know. Okay. So 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 I think that there's I think there'd be a significant yeah. amount of work involved, but it's. I like the idea of the National Register because then it's a historic district that actually kind of means something more than just a sign. It's not the sign, it's the, the listing that I feel um, means something. Um, okay, yeah. And it might make sense to think about doing this not all at once, do it district by district, like do the town center district first. Um, you know, whichever is the low hanging fruit, maybe. Sure. You mean like apply to the national registry one by one? Well, you're talking about five or six different districts. I'm saying yeah. don't do all of them at once. Maybe do one oh. and then see how it goes and then do and then more of them. Oh, 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 sure. Okay. And then that thing about getting a town vote. I, I don't know anything about well, that. Well, that's that. We're now we're talking about putting in a historic district as a bylaw in the town, which, you know, the National Register doesn't protect anything. Right. Um, but a bylaw, preservation bylaw, means, you know, that people are within that district have some obligation to preserve the structures that are on the national register if you do the nomination process. So yeah, that's see. where I get, you know, we would really need to get some buy-in from people. And I, I think that it could be a cool thing. I don't think it affects people's property values. I don't think that, you know, it makes your house more or less unsellable. It doesn't mean you can't paint your house. Doesn't mean you can't that's right. put a tree down. That's right. You know. Um, so, so, so what are your thoughts on surveying, you know, uh, getting a survey and seeing what the community is feeling about that all? I think if we don't present information to them, people may say no, because they're anxious and, and don't understand uh, what it means. And um, yeah. if you say a bylaw, people's first reaction is, you know, how is this going to not be a good thing for me? Personally, right. I mean, I think that's often people's reactions to zoning yeah, what regulations. Are the what are the restrictions? What is the implication for me and my house? So, and you know, the last thing we'd want to do is to get a bunch of people upset and then 
lobbying against it before we've even come up with a proposal. Okay. But I think, you know, for example, you don't have to have landowner or homeowner consent to do a national register nominations. Oh. Right, right. So I feel like, you know, before maybe that's the step we need to do is first get it on the national, get the historic districts on the national register and then say to people, well, now that you're on the register, wouldn't you like this protected? Wouldn't you like the neighborhood protected? And hmm. here's beautiful signs we can put up. Mm. And then you can actually put up a sign that says, now uh, this district is on the National Register. If you've noticed, let's say National Register, you could have that on the sign. So that it would be a cool thing too. It does mm. mean more, yeah. It means more, yeah. Well, you know, I, I seem to remember that Leslie, Leslie Bracebridge, Bracebridge yeah. had mentioned, this is deep in my memory, it could be totally wrong, but I think she mentioned something uh, of a downside to it, and I, I, I can't really uh, articulate it. Well, I think she said they did a survey of people around town center and that people didn't want it. Okay. But I also think that again, um, you know, if it's already on the national register, I mean, if I owned a house, I mean, obviously if I owned a house that was on the national register, I think that'd be a cool thing, but yeah. <laughs> my house is not going to get on the national register. Yeah. Well, you never know. <laughs> you think I don't that, think so. You uh, never know. You think that previous uh, historical commissions would have initiated this? Mm. No I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I can't, you know, I can't know. We can't know what the whole mentality of it was. And also, you know, that was 20, 25 years ago, people changed. <laughs> The people who live and own these houses are different people and there might be a different dynamic. Yep. Um, I think it's worth revisiting, but I think I like the idea of doing the nomination process. Um, yep. Okay, so I'll, I'll be on that. Is that a hand there? Yeah, it is. It, it seems to me that we're, we're kind of backtracking into past bits that were on the agenda a little earlier and now we're like covering the material over again and i just wonder about having i don't know if it's for this kind of a large meeting or if a few can get together and and kind of look at it from above and think okay what are the key uh strategic things to do first second third and why that it just seems like there's kind of a bouncing around and uh, and maybe it's because I don't understand all the steps, but I'm, I, it sounds like the national registry is not that hard to do. And then mm. that puts us on the map to some degree and it's kind of an issue of pride and that these, these uh, CSLs have, have some benefit for our pride of, of location and having been part of indigenous, uh, you know, long, long term before we ever showed up uh, life here, as well as colonial, you know, structures or however it gets framed. And then, and then so that, and that the bylaw, you know what I'm saying? That there's kind well, of a. So we off. were, I th well, I think we had on the agenda sign project updates. Yeah. I think Mary Lou started talking earlier about it, and we just sort of tabled that for this discussion um, because she, when she, we were talking about the minutes. Yeah, it's been up, on the agenda for some time now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just mean in, in terms of the overall, because the conversation is also talking about, you know, what what does what has what effect towards like weaving into the bylaws and who will support the bylaws and what kind of pushback there will be if this move is done too quick without this done. Do you know what I'm saying? I just think some kind of overview. Um, is that already happening? Am I just not seeing it? Well, we've been talking about doing historic signs and I think what we're realizing is that perhaps it was premature because that's kind of like the super superficial 
like easiest step, but the, the deeper, maybe more meaningful step is what is a historic district and, and who decides what a historic district is and who, how is it um, presented to the outside world in terms of being listed on the national register. Um, and, and so, you know, I shared some new information I received just in the last hour from the Leverett Historical Commission that they had done that process, which I thought they had. Um, so um, I think this is part of an ongoing discussion we're having about this topic. And I think we're kind of shaping our priorities as we go. Okay. As we learn more. Uh, but I think, you know, yes, preservation bylaws seem really important perhaps, or a scenic byway bylaw, but, um, you know, I think that we can do both things. We can talk about and start exploring more about a historic district. I'm, I think we need probably two or three people who are willing to kind of put some energy into looking at the National Register stuff. So I know Mary Lou wants to do it. I don't know who else. I think that's a lot, it would probably be helpful to have a, another person at least who wants to do that. Yeah, uh, Greg, are you still interested or what, what is yeah, happening? Yeah, I'm on the sign project. Yes, and I guess the sign project is a secondary step, isn't it, from the, the National Historic Precincts. Um, I'm not sure how much work is involved, whether I can really commit to that sort of research and mm. development. Well, in terms of steps, are you saying, um, if I'm understanding the conversation that, okay, before the signs, like explore the national registry and what that takes to, to, to assign. Nominate, to nominate and, a district. Nominate a district. And then uh, draft, you know, engage with Peter Vickery and, and Doug Harris. No, um, that's kind of separate. Are that's they? Not, but that's where well, that's really about the CSL stuff. This is not about the CSL stuff. We're talking about early colonial history, historic districts. Oh, you're not talking about native indigenous. No, no. no I'm sorry. There was a there was a transition oh, okay. there. Now we're talking about the the white people yeah. stuff. We're just talking about the white people stuff now. Sorry. <laughs> but, white but, but, privilege. White privilege. Right. Uh, but oh, see, oh, uh, goodness. See, really, historical district should encompass all, that's right all people right. Yeah. yeah right so that's, yeah, right. The, that's the, why that's why i'm influenced by the apple um signs i'm i'm very much influenced and and as l i don't i took pictures of them i can try and look for them and send them to you yeah. because they talk about not always in the most positive light. I, I would probably not use some of their, you know, like they said something about scalping and something about running away from Indians and this and this. Um, but I do think that that's an important part of declaring a historic district. Oh yes, most definitely. And, and um, Doug Harris at those, I've been following all those films talked about getting ceremonial stone landscapes into the national registry. Well, that's he did. Through, yeah, he yeah. did as a multi-site, a multi-site nomination process. Yes, so that's, yeah. So that's where um, I think there might that would not be that would not be like us getting a district of our own it, correct. on the national register. Correct. So and we would have to do it in conjunction with the tribal groups. Mm -hmm. that want to do that so I, we're really we should probably just kind of keep those as two different spheres of focus that we're have different projects for so so that so maybe you mary lou and greg could do some research about the uh, nomination process and okay that what it involves i definitely will i'll i'll um put that time aside <laughs> the good part is that, you know, this is not, a, unlike with the CSLs, this is not something that Mass Historical is against. They support this fully. This is what they're, this is what they do. This is what they want to do. And they will 
they, you know, they've nominated, they've determined that all these properties in Schutz Ferry that are identified in their inventory are already eligible for the register. Mm. 183 properties. Um, one of the things that we might want to think about in doing all of this, and this is kind of going back to the stones again, um, it'd be mapping, um, mapping millworks because um, in the forested tracks and along streams in Shutesbury, there are the old foundations of mills that are early settler mills. And those would also be eligible for uh, the National Register. Very good, wow. Mm. Nobody's done that. As far I asked, uh, I had a conversation with the state archaeologist, the deputy state ar archaeologist Ed Bell, and he said it's a. He said nobody's done it. He thinks it's a great idea. Oh. So Le Leverett hasn't done it. I saw for sure Eva was working on that. It's not, but oh. not like making it a historic district. Not like going out and mapping them and then and then oh. trying to get it nominated as a oh. district. Okay, you can and have like a whole district. Uh, if anybody um, wants, I have the historical map trail mappings um, from Athol that I would be happy to get you a hard copy. I just found it fascinating to stand there and read pre-colonial history. They have the name of their town. Yeah, they're lucky the because, because that I was know. a village. Well, Athol Orange was a village, oh. was a Nipmuc village. And wow. same thing with like Northfield was a village. And so there's all this like history <laughs> that's like 17th, 18th century history that we know about, about those villages because they were uh, part of, you know, um, Metacom's war, mm. things like that. Well, I, I, I think it's um, important history for our um, for the children to know about yeah. cause, because uh, there was nothing like that in any of my history books. And uh, I'm also in the classroom substituting and there still is nothing in any of the history books. So, you know, it needs to be um, Taught and I know Nolambika is in the process of producing a, a school curriculum. That's exciting, mm. because that's always been my question to them. <laughs> yeah, I think it's great. Mm. I, I have grandchildren of Native American heritage and, and they don't know much other than the tribe name. And I think that's pretty sad that it kind of ended there but what tribe is it Mary Lou? blackfoot oh, cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're beautiful children too <laughs> yeah, <I'm sure>. anyway <laughs> <laughs> okay so you, huh agenda wise how does that uh or past the signs, we move beyond that part of the agenda item. What's the next one? New business, Henry. Uh, new business. Is there any new business? Uh, one thing we have not actually discussed um, that uh, it was in the minutes from the 24th is the um, uh, representation on the. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, what is it now? O o o the CPA. CPA yeah. <laughs> or CPC, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Did you talk to Alan? No, I did not. Okay. I, I regret to say, I. Uh, uh, but um, I, I can do, and I suppose the, the mission here is to at least establish that somebody is going to be on that. Yes. So no. we had, were we thinking maybe Azel might be interested? Well, it was like Karen, if she if Karen. they could accommodate her. That was right, right. And I had volunteered. It was before I was sworn in. So can you re can you review for me what that actually means to volunteer to be do to do this? Oh, I'm not sure I'm the best person. I I know that they meet once a month. Is that it? And who I is they? So. Okay. It's called the the 
Committee for uh, Preservation, preservation Committee. Community Preservation Committee. Uh, again? Community Preservation Committee. Oh, I thought it was cultural. No. no. Yeah. And, and they have, oh. they have uh, substantial sums. I think the, 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 the uh, what's important at this point is that they've already met, I guess, uh, the deadline is passed for this year's round of funding. Is that correct, uh, anybody who's? Um, no, it, it's ongoing because what they have to do now is meet with the FinCom. Got it, okay. And they have to work out, um, it, it's, a, it's like a six month process from the time somebody applies. And um, Azelle, it's based on this Community Preservation Act, which is a state law and has very specific criteria about how, what kind of projects can be funded. It can be, there's a bunch of different categories, but it can be open space, recreation, right. preservation, but very, very stringent requirements. So a lot of projects that we might think would be, oh, that'd be great. They, they actually are not eligible. Um, and so different kinds of committees in town or even private parties pitch applications to the CPA the CPA decides which ones they want to sponsor, and then they go forward with the FinCom, work out a budget, and then it has to get voted in at town meeting, the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. And then the funding comes after that for the next and, fiscal year. And I think Azelle should know that um, the Historic Commission has applied two different applications to them, both of which were denied. I applied for historic signs because it, um, it, the best I can explain is that perhaps we were jumping the gun. You know, I was <laughs> envisioning these beautiful signs and what they would look like. And, but at any rate, I, I applied and um, was denied, but not discouraged to continue the project. I thought that was a really good thing, the chair said that personally to me you know well so, so what would what i see i feel like if i went on being so new i would really want to you know have one of you on my shoulder that's saying yeah propose this propose that because you know i'm not going to be as well, they're not nothing's getting proposed at this point because that deadline's already passed now they're just reviewing projects and different town committees have to have representatives on it. And so the historical commission needs to have a representative. Yeah. Okay, so I clear. thought you said they were kind of rolling. Be clear I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. That, that my, uh, I, was, um, I was charged with uh, approaching, uh, his name again, Al Alan. Alan. Mm -hmm. Alan Hansen. Hansen. <laughs> Uh, specifically <laughs> to see if they could accommodate Karen. Yes, mm -hmm. Karen? That's right. Nobody called me. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just, I'm, this is a confessional. I, I missed my chance. <laughs> not, I have not talked to Alan Hansen yet. So I that, that would be the first thing. If you're still interested, yes? Yep. Okay, good. Okay, cool. I, I will, I will, I will get on the, uh, on the throne piece and, and, or whatever it takes <laughs> and let him know and see if he could uh, arrange to have, I guess, the uh, documentation uh, um, provided for you. By so non-computer. Non I'm just trying to understand. Yes. So Karen would do it instead of me being on it. So yeah, yeah. she suggested it or was willing to before you became a member. That's correct. Oh, got it. Sorry to let this kind of roll. I was just remembering my own task. I've been very busy mm -hmm. with other things. In fact, I, I forgot to pay my bills. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> my credit card. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, but I will get in touch with Alan and see what the story is and, and how, how that might work out and then okay yeah we really should get this set up so that we're getting a representative yeah yeah we'll do very good 
good. Thank you. Um, and, and I can share with you, uh, if you have a minute, uh, I have it actually ready to share. This is the comic that I, I mentioned. Oh. Yeah. Good. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is this uh, actually a colleague. Uh, I, we, I just had a meeting with her yesterday. Um, and and um, yeah. oh. they use Native American. You see that? Right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Atale, that's Sonia Atale. Wow. Great. Mm -hmm. so, so are you imagining something like one of these reports could be put into this type of a framework? You know, some version of what we've done there. Yeah, I like it. It's great. It's, it's intended for Native peoples, archaeologists, historic yeah. preservation officers, museum administrators, and others involved in repatriation. It, it need not be repatriation. It could be mm -hmm. repatriation and, and other you know, historical archaeological preservation. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 yeah, that could be interesting. And, you know, so it's very much a comic, kind of you know, easy to read. Yeah. Anim animated, hey? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> very good. I think of comic as making fun of someone. No, well, no. But this is no, um, like, like Superman and Batman and. Oh. It's more graphic is the issue, not comic. So. Yeah. Oh. I don't know if you read, you know, Dennis the Menace. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 24, 24 pages. It's a regular booklet. Yeah. Wow. So that that's Sonia there, you know. That's you know, good. You know, somebody, oh. you know, Tippo. I don't know. This is going to be a creative process. I like it. Yeah, I like it very much. What's Nagpra? And Nagpra, uh, it's the. Uh, it tells you here um, about graves. Yeah, it's um, the Native it's American about, um, Graves Protection and Repatriation uh, Act. So if you find a bur if you find a burial site, you have to return. Like at um, the Wheelock Tract. Well, no, not like that. Uh -oh. <laughs> so anyway, you get the picture. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, you know. I would think that perhaps one angle, I don't know, might be, how do we know Native Americans ever really lived in Shutesbury or lived in this area? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and you sort of present the argument of, of the background and the even the migration or something like some of... Um, Tim's uh, films do, or, or and bring in the CSLs. Um, just that might be one way to offer something up to beginners and to even to school kids or, or yeah, like pose it like a series of questions. Yeah. Well, isn't it at all? Isn't it all just colonial fields, yeah. um, stone clearing? And yeah. Then have somebody, somebody answering that question. Yeah. Oh, okay. the, the, framing, the framing here is basically let's move from confrontational, you know, confrontation to cooperation about mm -hmm. that. So wow. It was a kind of, you know, it's a very much thought out in that, that kind of spirit. Uh -huh. huh. It doesn't have to be like that. You know, repatriation can be a way of museums and Native nations to forge new relationships. You know, this is, you mm -hmm. know, all different kinds yeah. of stuff. It could be towns and, you know, native people, I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. And then appreciating all stone cultural features. Yes. You know, that, yes, yes there's colonial, but it's more than colonial. And yes. we can appreciate it all. Yep. You know, something along that line. Thanks for sharing this, Henry. Yeah. Wow. I like it. Mm. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. So, so, Henry, is it a booklet? I mean, in its in its yeah. hard copy form. Uh, I don't I don't know if how they've done this. I'm sure they they put out some you know real <laughs> comics. <laughs> you know, you remember <laughs> comics? Can you read? Yes. Them? No, I never did. See. Oh, I did. 
No, we could only watch it on the TV on Saturday morning. That was it. <laughs> I, I grew up without TV, so you know you had to read comics. One oh, <laughs> listen, I I played Superman, Superwoman, Batman all afternoon today with a seven year old. Right. Oh goodness, <laughs> all kinds of superpowers. But he was telling me, oh, but but that won't work against this bad guy. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, that's great. It's great. Yeah, I think you get these folks kind of interested in, in working on this. It would also legitimize the project because, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also think it, it integrates something like this kind of integrates a visual with the, with the verbal. Yeah. You know, and, and also there's, there's a, with that whole questioning process, there's a way to tap into. Uh, objections and things like that but it brings it out in a different way you know it's great this this could be something if if um again um that could be kept in the library would we need sonia's permission to put it in our library if um, we have a well, copy i can, uh -huh. I can ask her i'm sure she, yeah. she'd be more than happy to to share it yeah and 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 it I'm sorry. This is accessible online. It's a yeah. Just download. I, I have issue with that too because every time I talk to somebody who tells me to go to the computer, I say to them, "You're assuming I have a computer." Well, you know that kind of thing. That kind of thing. That 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 might be a. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the news tells you to go to the computer when you're watching a 60 minutes it tells you to go to a computer but at any rate um i think it would be nice if sonia would give permission then to yeah. that marianne could keep it in our library yeah maybe there are actual hard copies of it rolling already around. yeah <laughs> I mean, it's it's an interesting example, but it isn't really pertinent to Massachusetts. It's about oh. yeah. well, well, that's, that's what... not true. That's not true. No. There are there are burials found all the time, not all the time, but they are. Really? Found, they have been found. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, and, been, and, they, and there have been they... issues. And there have been issues about it. Yes, um, okay. Miriam. You don't think they were found in the Wheelock track? I. They were identified by by quite a few different people as being there and then the history of why they got there was no, also Mary Lou, i wasn't saying that they weren't graves i'm just saying it didn't work the way the law suggests oh, oh, oh. that's right that's right so but henry didn't you bring this up in thinking about whether we might want to engage with with them or with her about creating a document around what we're doing yeah. for, for yeah. it's more tailored to the situation yeah. yeah that's and that might be we'd have to also find some funding yeah. and actually this could apply to any any town in massachusetts yeah uh, you could have like a model of some kind you yeah know? and that would make it even more interesting for, yeah. For, wow. for yeah 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 <laughs> this is a kind of a template for how to discuss something, how to uh, bring it forward and how to, to look at the complexities of it, right? So there's serious research behind it. Right. Yeah. And, but at the same time, it's communicated, you know, in a very, very straightforward, uh, very- Accessible way, yeah. Accessible way. Yeah, it's accessible, yeah. It's appealing to the eye as well. Yep, and, and, and it's not the, the, you know, with a video, it's, you know, you got to plug it in, you got to, it's a mm. thing. this is something that you can, it can be there and you can, you know, it can be accessed at different, well, I guess you can do that with video. It's it just, this is, um, yeah, it's a much simpler uh, format. It's much cheaper as well. I mean, animation mm -hmm. would cost you a lot of money to do this. Mm. It's very nice. Yeah great okay i wonder who did the artwork on it yeah but it was a team hmm. uh, so are some... you thinking henry there might be a grad student or an undergrad who might be interested in doing this yeah so your thought is, yeah no absolutely and uh, well no i've been in touch with sonia about the issues that are 
confronting the, the region and she seemed very interested. Um, yeah. yeah. Lovely. So do we need to make a motion to move. explore that? Yeah. We, I, I move that I, I will approach Sonia to, to maybe start a discussion about doing something like this. Um, I guess jumping off of the, the, the research we've done so far yeah. and beyond. Um, and and uh, maybe at some point, if she, if she has time, maybe she could come and talk to us about it. You know. Yeah, and I think if you give her a copy of the report, it'll give her some yep. background mm -hmm. or ideas too. Yep. Um, Good idea. I'll, I will uh, send when, out to everybody. When ready. <laughs> I will send out to everybody the updated version of the report. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Henry and I will talk about how to release this, how to email it out to people. Okay. Boards. Oh my God, it's going to go live. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I hope that, I don't know, you know, I, I worry that people are going to be going, oh my God, that's wrong. You didn't get that right. Or there's all these research. Oh, no, no. no, I think there's going to be some of that. So, because okay. I'm sure there's going to be some people whose feathers are going to get ruffled by this. Yeah. Well, but that's why you know what? we should get possibly, some... possibly some archaeologists. Well, maybe, maybe we should get some <laughs> feedback from. Um... <laughs> Certainly from Doug, but uh, yeah, there may be some archaeologists that might be willing to look at it, uh, including Kurt Hoffman. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's, well, I can send it to him. I can yeah, send it to him and see if he's willing to comment. At this point, refusing to at this point is a little bit, how should we say? Um, I think it challenges, uh, you know, his, I mean, you know, it's just, it, 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 it reflects on him. That he would refuse to, you know, this is a lot of effort went into it. It's something that w will have consequences for something he cares about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I, I is it? Are we agreed that I'll, I'll ask her? Yes. Possibilities yeah. and and send her the report. Actually. That'd yeah. Be Don't send it yet. I've got to send you the right yeah. copy. Okay. Um. Do you want to have an official vote? Henry made a motion, right? We need for I mean, it. I don't really think we need one. It's I don't just, know if we you know, need one. We don't okay. really have any action. He's just going to go okay. get some information. Good. Yeah. I like this one. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Dead Indians. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, any other new business then? Let me stop sharing here. So next meeting is going to be our annual meeting. Did we figure out what that date is yet? No, let's do that. So if we mm. want to keep this Wednesday time, which um, so we don't compete with the other board meeting. Um, let me pull up my calendar. Wednesday. That, I don't think we need to meet. I think once we can meet in a month, I don't know that anything's going to happen. I guess, you know, the thing that we haven't talked about tonight was about the solar bylaw report. Oh, yeah. Week to release that, I couldn't remember. Somebody remind me, Janice, we were taking notes. I don't remember either. I haven't done the last set of minutes yet. No. Um. So the next, the next uh, would be um, April the twenty first. Nobody else remembers. We we're I there. We could, I thought we couldn't finish it until we had actually seen the the plans to be able to add specifics to it. Or are you just talking about no. guidelines? The no, guidelines the, the bylaw, the bylaw report. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought both were going to be sent out. I think okay, that's why you're right. Yeah, I, I think it's important. I don't, you know. It, this is all like very key stuff that's timely so i agree i think that we can't wait i mean it would be great to get peter vickery's feedback but i i don't want to wait i haven't even got his email at this point i don't you know i think we're not there in terms of timing to get his feedback i mean you know people can say hey you got it wrong but that's okay you know we're a historical commission right. we're not lawyers um 
<laughs> we did we did vote at the 319 meeting to approve the solar bylaw document okay. and we all voted in favor with minor changes as discussed right and and greg got me the new cover which is lovely yeah, yeah. Um, oh good so i have the new cover okay so i will send both of those documents to you guys you probably as you noticed before they don't come as attachments they come on a google drive mm. and then you have to click on the link and download it yep. um you know so i'm not giving you permission to edit it because you can download it yourself and then do whatever you want with it okay what date did we decide on for the meeting 21st the 21st what time 21st what time seven it have to be seven because we've got this other group that we're belonging okay. to yeah and i have cemetery at six so i don't want to miss that so they're the, they're always the third wednesday so we've been sort of avoiding that this month but we tend to go back to it i guess is that going to be a problem on the 21st for you well as long as they keep it to the six o'clock then you know that'll be most of the meeting that'll be fine okay And do we have to do anything special for the annual meeting? Not really. Okay. We just have to call it that. If anybody wants to bring cookies, you can eat them in front of us. <laughs> you can eat them in front of us. How's that? Could be an occasion for uh -huh. uh, cocktails or anybody anything? going to be at town hall? <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> right then. Yeah. So thank, thank you, uh, Sue, for uh, your attendance and uh, your input, actually. Well, thank you for, for letting me sit in. Um, I did have one question. Is it known at this time who would be going on to the Coles property to do the identifying of sites, potential sites? No, nothing is no. clear. It's no. too early. OK. Yeah. I'm assuming it's somebody that Cole would be, Coles would be bringing in. Well, we are hoping that a, um, a tipple will be allowed yeah that was my thought that it would be really great to, to push for that well we can use all the support we can get because um i don't know what kind of pushback there will be around oh, that there will be a lot of pushback. Be yeah yeah I just, uh, but, but i think you know really kind of like and that's why we we wrote this bylaw paper to the planning board sort of saying it's, you know, the bylaw paper is talks about the role we think a TIPO should have. Oh, and cool. we want to, you know, use that as a conversation with the planning board about, you know, stick to your guns, stick to the bylaw. The bylaw can work for us. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. Um, I am, you know, there's a lot, go there's a lot of, a lot of things are up in the air here. Well, I'm happy to, um, keep attending meetings and volunteer where I can. I'm particularly interested in the lake. I live at the lake, so I'm very interested in the, the project around the lake. Wow. Well, thank you. Well, thanks, Sue. Thanks for yeah, coming. Thanks. Hey, Sue. <laughs> so if you want a copy of the report, I don't have your email. Do you have my email? I don't. I um, have Sue's. I could send it on. Yeah. Okay. Send it to me and then I can send her a copy. Okay. 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 So are we then adjourn? I'll move it move to adjourn the meeting. Two seconds. I'll second it. Okay, Karen seconded. Okay. All right, uh, we're done. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good okay. work. Good work, gang. Okay. Thanks. Right. Thank you, everybody. Hello. Bye. 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 Yeah. Well. Good night. Thank you too. <laughs> bye bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Hey, Henry. Hey. Ah. No. We're still here. <laughs> no, that is a really, oh, and so is, so is Mary Lou. That is a very cool document. I yeah. love, I love graphic. Yeah. yeah. No, graphic it, novel it, stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to have that link. If it's available it's publicly, okay. send me that link. I'll send it to you. Yeah. I'd love to kind of look at it. it. I just think it's a great way to communicate something that has some kind of sticky issues. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a great way. It, it's just, it is accessible. It, 
Yeah. Yeah. In a whole different way. Yeah, it, it brings the language to another place. Yeah. It's because good. right now I'm confronting how to approach this play that I've written about Belchertown State School and the 70 plus years of people who lived and died there. Oh just, my goodness, Azel, yeah. I, I worked for a woman who used to live there. Oh I went my. into her home and I was waiting for the homeowners. The state has a program that they'll give you a home if you take care of the, pa the dislocated patients. Okay. And, and I used to work for her. I'm sorry, it's just you saying that. I remember her. Oh my goodness. So you're writing a, a, a what? Well, I've written a play and I've got grants and I'm part of a larger project in Belchertown. It's, wow. called, it's called A Walk of Reflection. And, and so it's about framing the whole story. I mean, there's so many YouTube videos where people have broken in and and have, you know, oh, ghosts through the abandoned buildings and all of that. But so I've written a play, but even I walked on the grounds yesterday with the man who had lived there for, for 10 years from the time oh he was nine until he's 19. Oh. He's a bit older than I am. So he, and he was saying, oh yeah, I remember that. And you know, just being on site with him was so powerful. And for him, he can't read um, all this stuff that is being written about. He had a book in his hand, but he can't read it. And because he didn't get educated while he was there. And so I was just thinking about an alternative kind of statement. So this play speaks about you know the the way eugenics viewed people and blah blah all this stuff no. but it makes me think that there's a possibility to produce something like this that talks about how people with disability are labeled and then kind of pushed aside oh yeah you're not as good as you don't it's all it's all having to do with you know a certain level of uh, ability or accomplishment or something but it's not about the uniqueness and the beauty that each person holds yeah. Yeah. in their in themselves so I mean he's an amazing person I was just talking to him today and I said Rick I know that you could learn to read you just have to figure out the key you know the key to language and sounding things out and you're motivated so, I mean, I may be teaching him <laughs> or getting him involved in some group to do it, but I something like a graphic novel like that. It just, anyway, it's just very moving. And I think it, it applies to this work too. Yeah, no, no. And there could be other, other things. I don't know, you're a creative person. Maybe you could dream up some other way of getting these messages across. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think it's a great way to bring out different messages, but, you know, even bullying, all this stuff about this guy who, who shot up that grocery store, you mm -hmm. know, the latest is that he was badly bullied through school for being a Muslim. And oh. so he had a very short fuse and, and that kind of thing. And, and that may all be really, really true. That happened at Columbine. You know, that's what they figured out was the, the, the guy who did the the shooting at Columbine was bullied all the time. Yeah. So yeah. But I the, just think there have to be other approaches. Anyway, it's late. Thank but, you. Uh, anyway, yeah, no, we'll figure something out. I um, yeah. I look forward to the, the you know possible collaboration. You know, maybe Sonia would do something that you yeah. know, could involve other people, I'm sure, because she's very collaborative anyway. Oh cool. Yeah. Is she local? Henry? Yeah, yeah, she lives in Amherst. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, but this document was about Michigan. Yeah, she's originally from there. She's Ojibwe, the Ojibwe oh. people from that area. Right, right, right. right. Oh, right. Um, and um, but she's been here. I guess I don't know. Uh, I don't know. At least at least six years. Yeah. Um, okay. And. Um, yeah, she, she's motivated. I know that. <laughs> yeah. To do something, you know. 
Okay. Yeah. All right there. Good. Yeah. Got, got to go work now. <laughs> work. I know. Yeah. You too. See ya. So, okay. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Mary Lou. Mary Lou. Let me go see. Hey, I'm sorry. I was on mute. Yeah, what's going on? I was I was asking, is Sonia a professor? I didn't know I was on mute. Yeah. No, yeah, she is. She's a professor at UMass. Oh, very good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Huh? She's in anthropology there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All righty. So you're going to send her booklet to everybody or I'll just send you, I'll send you a link. Thank you. Now, the, uh, I wondered if you knew a guy in, at UMass, uh, his name is John Wester. I don't. No. I know Justin Beatty. Yeah. He, um, do you know him? He drums at the powwows. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. He's a student, um, a graduated student as am I. I don't, alumni, yeah. alumna. Um, yeah, the, the UMass is, is, is um, closing um, different centers. They're having a, they're giving a hard time. I think I talked about this with you, uh, with the Josephine Eagle Center. They're closing it. it, it they are, and, and the, uh, quite a few other ones. I don't know. Yeah. These entities are making cuts and they're just taking the easiest. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's nothing new. I know this it's terrible. For years, and uh, the, you know, the the the, the uh, what's very very upsetting is that they actually have more money than they had a year ago. See. See. Um, See. The, the superintendent in Amherst just got a $170,000 contract written. If they, if he's dismissed without cause, he'll get paid for a year. Oh, well, but that's the town of Amherst? The town of Amherst, but they made cuts to the students. They're, they're taking out art, they're taking out, they're making, um, they're oh. making, teachers travel from building to building yeah this is the the town these are the schools schools in amherst the public schools in massachusetts and amherst in particular are very close with what and this superintendent henry was never um he never applied for a position can you imagine he just got stepped into them but at any rate money well, I money about, i say you're talking about umass no, no, I'm sorry. I was talking about money as a whole when you said they have more money. Yeah, no, no, at UMass, it's the same thing. They have all this money, and, but they want to cut, cut all kinds of stuff. See? Isn't the Josephine Eagle thing at UMass, though? So? That's right. Right, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's always been this way. There was, a, there was a, um, a, uh, an office dedicated to Latinos for many, many years. And they eliminated that. That was like 25 years ago. See? Um, and now everything is under one roof. Wow. Uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Wow. Well, okay. Anyway. I'll go to bed and cry. <laughs> No, I don't cry. No, I'll write a, I'll, I'll write a yeah. poem, okay? <laughs> Time to organize. Huh? <laughs> Organize. You, yeah, know, yeah. you know, you can you, you can influence things. <laughs> huh? I just work there. You're an alumna. <laughs> alumna. <laughs> it, it, alumna. I looked that up. It, it has its gender. Um, alumni might be both male and female, but it doesn't matter at any rate. Okay. <laughs> Have a good night. You too. Okay.
Bye bye. See you. Go. I don't know how to sign off. I'm sorry. No, I'll, I'll do it for you.